<laughs> Hello, um, how's everyone doing today? I'm so uh, excited to be here and so I think I'm just going to talk a bit about what got me into telling stories, um, some of the things I faced that, you know, kind of steered me in the direction I am today and uh, just show a couple of my film works and then I'm going to be hosting a storytelling workshop if any of y'all has never been in one of Apple Shop's uh, famous uh, story circles, we'll be doing that and we'll be going over like, some of the basics of media creation and, you know, if anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know because that like, media creation, I could literally spend like two days talking about it. So, you know, I just got to get the bare, bare minimums in involved. Um, so, yeah, I guess I started to start just... Um, Growing up, um, I grew up with uh, mostly my mom, and we were on the move quite a bit. Um, my earliest uh, memories are like in growing up in Hazard, Kentucky. Um, mom, like really, really worked. You know, she worked full time, went to college. You know, single mother raising me, and. Um, she always said, like, growing up, like, she noticed I was, like, kind of different. Like, she didn't think I could speak until I was about, like, four or five. And, um, you know, uh, like, she didn't think I could do, like, uh, coherent sentences until, like, she said she noticed me, like, in my bedroom. And I had this little alphabet machine that um, she'll say she bought, to, um, bought to, to help me learn my alphabet. But, uh, but in reality, I, I kind of stole my cousin's Christmas present because I liked it too much. <laughs> You know, as as kids tend to do. But she said she would notice me uh, like like being able to tell, like hit the ABCs in order. And then she said she finally caught me like trying to sound out. Um, I, 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 I believe it was the like the word stay, because like someone we grew up with in Hazard um, said it kind of like stay. You know, like he had you know, you know, just had like a go like a go away It's like me like. As I, but she, anyway, she said she caught me like sounding out like how to say it before, you know, before I, before I would say it around people. And so we kind of grew up then and it was about um, sixth grade that um, it was like when I was uh, like officially diagnosed. Um, apparently I did a bunch of tests. I don't remember doing the test. Um, but um, they said the, the way the teacher explained it was that I learned different and I comprehend different and, you know, I just understand things differently. And, you know, I didn't think nothing of it at the time, but like the moment I started going into like the special education classes, like immediately my whole circle of friends avoided me like the plague. And that was just kind of the, kind of the start of it. And so by the time I went to, went to high school, like, um, under the guise of like having someone be around me so they could help me write because my handwriting, to anyone who's ever had me like, take notes will testify, <laughs> you cannot read it at all. <laughs> um, so like under the guise of writing for me, they had this aide follow me around to, cl like, to, to class and she would secretly like, write down every single thing I did, every interaction I had. And I didn't know this to about nine weeks later when they just sent my mom like a documented like day-to-day -day list of here's everything he did, here's every conversation he had, and you know, and so they sent, um, so they kind of suggested that I want to go because you know like I, I didn't want to, I didn't like high school at all. I went to this, um, I went to this like a, you know like the alternative ed building, which is. Uh, which I, I believe it's two different buildings now, but they used to send it to like, the kids who got sent off for like, disciplinary behaviors. So I got to sit in with some people who were there for some very, very biz like, biz uh, biz uh, bizarre reasons. So, um, but the principal promised 10 days, didn't like it, I can come back. And so um, 10 days went, I didn't like it, and then they d denied me to come back based on what the aide had wrote about me that, like, I was having trouble making friends, and, you know, it's kind of like kids don't want to go around someone who has, like, basically a teacher, you know, like, they'll be, be in their shadow everywhere they go. So I stayed down there. The 
I, I, for like the next three semesters of my freshman year, I got to, um, because uh, one one uh, educator, uh, Butch Chaltis, who never gave up fighting for me, I was able to come back sophomore year. And sophomore year, I had a different aide who was like much, much worse. And, you know, like I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to act like I was, you know, I'm not going to act like I was like, you know, a, 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 you know like, a, like a shining star. I was an angsty teenager. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, and so, like this, but like this teacher would um, purposely provoke other students, who and then in turn would t take it out on me. And there was like one instance she got on to one student for, I, th I think it was like a Family Guy T-shirt. Um, told him to turn it inside out. He said no. And then like when the teacher come in, she like said that he mouthed off to her and stuff, and got him sent sent off. And that was like one of the few people who would talk talk to me. He never talked to me again, and then another person, I forget what she said to him, but I, after class, as I was heading back, he took a big run going, hit me in the back of the head. And at the time, I was like, well, I guess I deserved that. You know, she did provoke him pretty bad. And I also had a teacher who was a lead educator, you know, like, like real up, I like, can help and teach special ed students. Some um, she would like openly call me like the, the R word in class in front of like all these students. And it got to the point where I was like really ashamed to tell people I have Asperger's because it was like, it was like as soon as I said that, like they would immediately, you know, they, they wouldn't say anything, but they would talk a bit slower, use small words, and they would do that. And I would just be like, I, I can comprehend what you're saying quite well. <laughs> so, I did. I didn't. So, like, other than like my drama class, I really love drama, and my fantasy literature class. Like, really, I don't think I would ever go back to any other high, like high school classes. And it was actually in my fantasy lit, lit class that um, I got um, like um, two people, uh, Ben Spangler and Eagle Brosley, come in for this, and they were representing Apple Shop for this program, the Appalachian Media Institute. So they, you know, so I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll apply. And I'll admit, I think my application had like 150 words total. I think, uh, like I remember one of the answers is like, what movies do you like? I'm like I like movies that I think are cool and can keep my attention. And <laughs> so, so for whatever reason, they're like, all right, let's interview this guy. <laughs> so... I come in and it's an audio production workshop and they're like, why should we hire you? And I just bring it, put out this like blank DVD that I had a bunch of these like old films I made. You know, a bunch of just uh, visuals for like an audio workshop. So I just put that in and played that and it's like, that's why I think I should be a part of it. And I don't think the interview, like other than like just some basic questions, I think that was it. And for whatever reason, they're like, Let, let's hire this guy. So they hired me. I did my first workshop, and immediately, like uh, you know, I immediately f fell in love with it because it's something. Like I grew up around a lot of people. Um, if any of y'all have seen Apple Shop's uh, Stranger with the Camera, like that's the that's the region I grew up in. And to to put it kindly, people really do not like having their picture taken there. Like to, like to, to this day, there's there's like a bunch of. Dad's friends, like as soon as you come to visit them, they, they tell you, leave, you know, they're like, leave your phone outside. And that, you know, that's not a suggestion because they don't want any chance of you, like anyone sneaking, taking their uh, their picture. So, you know, need, needless to say, like there's not a lot of like, like, like full family photos. I think there's only one of my mom, my brother, and I, like, all three together. But, um, so... You know, so I, I finally got to document stuff. Um, and it's something I've noticed that um, I was like either when you're doing like candid, you know, like home movies or when you get so comfortable enough on the camera, like that's like when you can really document them. And, you know, like a, like a picture can tell a thousand words, but I think video could just like tell countless because, you know, you see how they move, like you just see like, like their, their mannerisms and stuff. And so I really didn't do like a lot of videoing, and he, he like, since, like I had, I've had a, like a video camera since 
2009, and I didn't do a lot of vi video things. And my, and my stepdad, who was this, I mean, you know, he, he was someone, like he was just as focused as I was. In fact, one story I was tell, telling, I'll, like I tell, is like when the Nintendo Wii first came out, I, like he got me one like as soon as they launched, and about a month in, the disc thing broke. So we had to send that off to get fixed. And, you know, when you go home in a hauler and you don't have any internet, um, there's no one in the hauler that's your age. The, the closest person age-wise to me was a good nine years older than me. You know, I was like, I, you know, I, I want my way back. <laughs> you know? And so he, so he, he went out, like he worked real hard. He used to do, you know, like work for us, Bundy, the tree company, and then he did like a whole bunch of lum, you know, like a bunch of physical manual to get enough just for me to get away. And so he drives 30 minutes to Wattsburg and they don't got one. So he drives 45 minutes to Hazard and they don't got one. So then he drives all the way to Lexington and, uh, he, and they, they don't have one. And so according to my, mom, he was literally gone all day and he finally found one clo real close to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So I think, and she's like, by the end of it, he was just as happy to get him to get that way, way as you were. You know, he, he had to get it. And so, you know, um, and so I, 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 my, my freshman year of uh, college, um, he, uh, he unfortunately succumbed to uh, cancer. And I looked through all my videos and I literally only have one, like one, one video of him. And it's him, not as I remember him. It's him, you know, kind of, you know, kind of sickly, not, you know, barely being able to move. And, you know, like whenever I remember him, I remember him being energetic. You know, he couldn't sit still. He was always just moving around, moving around. And I've only got one brief recording of his vo voice, and it's still hard to listen to. And it's just literally like, how are you doing, Oakley? You know, and it was mostly just him talking talking to my cousin because my stepdad loved me, but, you know, he was, you know, he was like as southern as they come. He loved NASCAR, hunting, four-wheel riding, and I didn't like any of those. <laughs> so, you know, you know, he bonded with people who, who, uh, who, who did. But that's like the first time I was like, I really wish I had, you know, because like I was just so scared of recording, you know. And I, like, I was scared of upsetting him. I was scared of doing this. You know, I was like, he wouldn't want, him, want me. But like, if I'd done that, like, I could have captured so much more because, you know, he has a daughter that's growing up. And, you know, I'm like, I only got just one video, you know, him. And, you know, it's just him cutting up, you know, some, some rather crude, not child appropriate uh, uh, hum, uh, humor, you know, him cutting up with, with my cousin. So I'm like, you know, like, I really wish I'd preserved more of that. So that got me wanting to tell, like wanting to tell stories, and so I'm just going fast forward just a bit, just just uh, through through to, uh, through through time, and actually I'll go ahead and start a slideshow. Okay, so my first um, like LGBT film I did was in 2013, and it was something I'd never. You know, like that's one of the hardest parts about growing up, uh, you know, like in the South is sometimes you got to admit the way you grow up is extremely bigoted. And that's like a real hard thing, you know, like being able to separate, you know, treasured memories from stuff that's just not, you know, just not okay, not okay. And so, you know, my, my family was not, you know, de def definitely, uh, you know, I like, was like as like anti-LGBT as possible. And, you know, um, so, like, anyway, so I had to kind of sneak to get on this one film because it was a film about Wattsburg, Kentucky's first drag show in Summit City. And so I kind of just told mom, I was like, you know, she's like, oh, what's your final product about? I'm like, art. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> and so... Uh, and uh, like around this time, was a good friend of mine. If anyone's met uh, D Dustin Hall, if you haven't met him, you're you really miss like that. that like he's literally like one of the most wonderful human beings I've like, I've ever met. Like he actually like came out, and when he 
And he was just like talking about how people were treating him out at the same high school. And I'm just like, and I'm just like, that's not right. I mean, he's like the nicest person you like, like you ever meet will go like well out of his way to like to to help people. And so, you know, he kind of, like he he's been in a lot of stuff. Like Al Jazeera interviewed him, Teach for America, New York Times, and so. So about three about three years had passed by passed by this point, and um, we were just talking about the stuff he was in, and you know, uh, you know, like it's just like a real like we we went to this uh, fellow AMI intern uh, who lived all the way in Moorhead, so like a three hour drive to her like sixteenth uh, b- birthday party, and he was like, "You want to really know something about like all the stuff I'm in?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "I hate every single piece of media I'm in," and I'm like. How come? And he's like, he's like, they just use me as a punchline, you know. They, you know, it's like they get me to say a few quirky things, and that's just who I am. They don't, you know. He's like, he's like, they don't tell the story I want to tell them. So I'm like, well, why don't I just set a camera up and have him tell the story? And so I was getting set up for this, and he ended up 2016 and it being a very busy summer for him, so he wasn't able to like, sit down to do an interview, but. At the time, there was this intern at the Appalachian, Appalachian Media Institute, uh, Oliver Baker, who just told this, like, really, you know, just like this real heart, you know, like heart wrench, like, bittersweet story about, like, you know, and like they had, like, he hadn't even com- uh, come out uh, yet. So I decided to interview, uh, like, interview Oliver, and, you know, like a lot of, um, you know, like, like especially now, because, like, it's actually going to be, Shown in this film festival in New York, actually, to, uh, to, uh, today, uh, and you know it's like one of two Apple Shop films uh, so selected, and the other one's like one of the big budget, you know. So, but you know, everyone back, you know, like I was behind him 100% of the way, but the, um, but but like literally, any time I showed this movie, it was just like a whole list of critiques from all my professors because it's like a 20. I think it's like 20 minutes total, and it's telling, you know, just one person's story. And so they watch it once, and they're like, they're like you need to interview someone else. And I'm like, no, like, I want to tell this person's story. And he's like, no one's going to sit and watch 20 minutes of one person speaking. And then it was, um, and then it was like, because uh, like I believe, you know, like if you interview someone, you should, like I want to capture them like as they are. Like if you saw them in the street, that's how they're going to talk to you. And there's like some real powerful moments when Oliver's talking about dysphoria. Like he drops like it's like it's like, it's like well, not not one f bomb, but it's like two back to back. And they're like, you got to cut that. And I'm like, I'm, I don't want to cut it. You know, I'm like, it's really powerful. And they're like, that's going to limit everywhere this film's going to be shown because it's got. Three like three f bombs in the film because there's one towards the end, uh, and I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll take my chances, and so I showed it, and you know, and so like, and like, uh, like it's probably two weeks later that I could really realize like how big it blew, blew up, and it's like when someone stopped me on the street and like that that uh, they're like your documentary have gave me the strength to to, to come out, and it's like a really powerful piece, you know, because of the like Oliver story, and it just so happened because I go out and film, you know, stuff just just just, uh, just to film, and I was in a really bad home life situation, and there was times I would just go out all day and just film all these nature shots, and that's like the scenery for, for Not a Daughter. So, you know, there's like shots like in the snow, st- you know, snowstorms and st- stuff, stuff, um, and you know, so I could still, I could something, you know, like, uh, you know, it's like it's like finally finding purpose for something because I'm like, I want to capture these. I don't know what I'm going to use this footage for, but sometime down the line, I'll know. And that's, you know, that's uh, kind of how it happened. So it blew up, you know, uh, pr- uh, pr- uh, pretty big. And um, uh, so about a year, you know, like a, you know, like a year or so later, my my boss, um, uh, K- uh, uh, Kate Fowler, who is. Like she's one person. Like she, she's believed in me a lot more than I, I believe in myself. So she's like, you should apply for this uh, fellowship, you know, from the Open Society Foundation. It's like a, 
you know, it's like this, uh, it's like this company George uh, Soros found. They do like a lot of extensive documentary work, and um, and so I was like, okay, I'll apply for it. But I'm, you know, and then I'm like, they're only taking six people. You know, I'm like, there, there, there's no way. So you know, I applied. You know, figured I'd get that. You know, if we could pick one more person, uh, you know, or you know, or just that, or something that big, just thanks for applying. And then, like about a few months later, I'd made it to the second round. I was like, oh, at least I can be like, well, I made it to the second round of this fancy grant. You know, I, you know, t- talking to people. And um, so then I did an interview, and I was so nervous. I cut my hair, my hair short, wore like a real fancy outfit. Um, you know, and and I did this, and I like I really think I bombed that interview. I right, so so, uh, like, so like so bad because like you know because like at the time I hadn't had the courage to like, talk like openly talk about having Asperger's, so I kind of jumped around a couple of their questions, and I was like, I blew that. I'm like I was like, you know, and so I, you know I kind of just kicked myself around for like a few days because I'm like I just blew it, and so. So about two, about two months later, I was um, I, 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 I was absolutely annihilating my nephew at Mario Kart, <laughs> um, and um, and, my, and mom's uh, and mom's uh, mom's uh, b- boyfriend comes kind of like, hey, is that there's someone on the phone for you? I think it might be a telemarketer. I don't I don't, I don't, I don't recognize the accent. I'm like, okay, and so yeah, and so. I speak to him and he's like, you know, and he's like, hi, I'm from the Open Society Foundation. Are you like, are you Oakley Fugit? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I just want to let you know, out of the 3,500 people who applied for this grant, you got it. Yeah. And and like literally, I was just, like, <laughs> you know, I was like, I, you know, I was, and like I think I was like, oh, okay, thank you. And, <laughs> you know. So I could just sit down, you know, I went in the whip, you know, went, went back in my room, sat down, and my nephew's like, when are you going to unpause the game? And I just unpaused it, got up, I was like, you've earned this one, and just walked out the room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, I was like, oh my God, you know, because like this grant was not only to produce four more LGBT uh, pieces of media, but it was to convert this place I worked, you know, the boom building where they teach the AMI interns into a safe space. And I'm just like, is that really like, like? Am I really going to get to, you know, not only do do like what like what I love, but you know, get to open this place that's really, you know, it's like it's like so important because they're, you know, because now because now Whitesburg's, you know, like 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 I really love the current shape. Like you know, you used to the there was like a lot of places that you come in and they're like, yeah, it's also a safe space, and I'm like I'm like I want one that like. Openly says like I want it like I want it plastered on the door, you know. So like I got to open that. I got to go show my films in D- Detroit, Baltimore, New York twice, Colorado. Like I've like just getting getting to go show show all these films, and it's just you know like, like it really you know it's just like I like, like honestly like there's pictures of me doing it. There's uh, all this stuff, and I still can't believe like, I, I went and did all that. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's all because, like, you know, just because, like, I wanted to document these stories about people, like, who want to have their stories told, and I wanted these documentaries where people tell their, like, their own stories. And so, and, and you know, it's so like, here I am. I've got I've got two that just got recently accepted in how I can Amazon. I've got a third one that's about eighty percent done, and then I got the fourth, like the, and then I got, and then I start working on the fourth one. So I think I'll show. See how how we're doing on time. All right, through the three three minutes. So I'll probably just play the 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 intro, and then um, if you look, uh, Open Arms in East Kentucky is the piece the Open Society. Did where they cover the opening of the safe space. If anyone needs a link, just message me. I'll, I'll let you know if you're. Um, and the way my films on Amazon Prime work is, you know, like if you, like if y'all want to buy support, like, like that, that'd be great. But they're also free, free, uh, you know, free on YouTube because like I just, 
you know, like I want to, you know, because I feel everyone should see this, and that's just the way I'll be like, you know. So, you know, because like the story, you know, it's like everything else, it's like as long as I'm able to, I'm going to make movies. You know, if I, if I happen to make money on, you know, I can only sustain myself. So, you know, that might be cool. <laughs> so, so th this is um, one who, um, so I'm going to show the intro to this one um, called uh, This Is Me. This is the story of uh, uh, Dominic Spangler, like a young trans youth who, um, you know, um, came out during the 2015 summer of AMI and, you know, like really got it the worst from Fletcher County Central. They got bullied up until the point where, because like the teachers wouldn't do anything. Um, and they got bullied to the point where they said, said something back, you know, like something like, I'm, you know, you know like if you don't, if, like if you don't stop, I'm going to smash your face in. And they got charged with terroristic threatening and got sent to prison and got expelled. Like over that, so this is their, so this is the opening, and I would say if anyone walk watch it, there's like a real lot of mature themes in that, and so you know, just just uh, just a heads up. Okay, so the full film's on YouTube, Amazon, if anyone wants to see it. Um, uh, whoever's st sticking around for the, you know, for the Story Circle workshop, if, uh, if this is the film y'all want to see, we, we, can, uh, we can watch that. So uh, thank you so much for just letting me uh, r uh, ramble. <laughs>